uh, in that situation. That's why lower utilization is, is good. Um, the, uh, they also have uh, another highly weighted category of payment history. That's a huge, huge uh, category. Payment history. Uh, this is one of the heavily weighted ones. Um, whenever banks look at your credit, your credit report, they look at uh, they look at um, how you're paying back your your loans. If you're paying them as you agreed in the initial contract or agreement, uh, or if you're not, if you're not paying them back as agreed, that's going to really, really hurt your credit. Um, they have different um, ways of determining this. They have late payments, uh, they have a 30 day late payment marker, uh, 60 day, 90 day, and then uh, I think, but after yeah, 120, usually, yeah, and after 120 it's really, really bad. Yeah, those um, are that's, that's based on late payments uh, and missed payments. Um, your, your payment history is going to greatly uh, affect how you get loans. It's going to greatly affect your credit score. Um, there's also derogatory marks. Um, this is a big, big factor. Things like collections, bankruptcies, civil judgments, uh, and liens. Um, they usually take about seven to 15 years to get removed from your credit report. Um, you have bankruptcies, like there are chapter 13 bankruptcies. Chapter 13 bankruptcies are that you're paying back some of your loans. Um, you're not able to pay them all back, but you're paying back some of what you owe. Uh, and those usually last seven years on your credit report. Then you have chapter seven uh, bankruptcy, which is you're not paying any of your loans back. And that lasts for 10 years on your credit report. Um, you also have liens. Liens can go on your house or car uh, or whatever you own. Those are for not paying taxes. Uh, they usually last on your credit report for about 10 years from filing, or seven years if you pay them. Uh, then you have judgments. Uh, judgments are simply just debt that you owe because of court, uh, court costs. Whether it's a result of a lawsuit that was won or lost, um, or maybe lawyer fees or whatever it is. Uh, but it's, it's once it's paid, then the, up, then the entry is updated to show that it was, it was paid. Um, your age of credit is a huge thing. Uh, this one can't really be done quickly. Um, age of credit is just how old your accounts are. Um, this is also heavily weighted. This is why opening a bunch of new accounts is going to be bad for your credit report. Uh, yes, it will increase your utilization, simply because you have a bunch of open credit cards with no new balances on them. But it's going to decrease your account age significantly, because our account age is based on the total average. So if you open up 10 new uh, 10 new uh, credit cards, then all of a sudden your your account age is going to drop like crazy. Right. Um, what if I kept them around for 10 years, then it would then it would be very very good for your credit in 10 years. Yeah. Um, but this is also the reason you always want to keep your oldest account open. Right. Because I don't know if you've done done the math in school about averages, but yeah. any outliers, the outliers, outliers, outliers really, really affect the overall. And apparently, credit um, credit reporting agencies can't be bothered to hire people who understand that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but that's why they always say always, always, always keep your oldest account open. So you want to try and uh, you want to try and keep uh, your oldest account as a no fee account like a no annual fee account, even if you don't use it. Is that even possible to have no APR? No, 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 no annual fee. Okay. No annual fee card accounts. Yeah. Uh, that, that basically says that um, you, you don't owe anything each year for being a member of that card. Most banks do that. Most banks yeah. have, most banks have uh, zero, yes. Now, I had a question. Something I thought I understood about credit cards, but could be completely wrong, is if you use the credit card and you pay it back within the allotted time of, say, a month, um, I didn't think you owed interest. Without interest, there's only a penalty. You don't. There is a 30-day rolling Yes, period. there is a 30-day rolling period. It's a, uh, yeah, exactly what he said. 
Um, you don't owe interest. It's a, it's a what do they, they grace call it? Grace period. Yes, it's, it's a grace period. Um, you don't owe interest. So what the, the best thing you can do is is use your credit cards, and then once you get your statement, pay it in full. But then. Like he said, the bank won't be making money like that, so wouldn't that be bad for your credit? The bank is, the, the credit card companies, no, the credit card companies are still going to be making money. They have this thing uh, called swipe fees that they charge the companies that take and accept your card. That's how Visa, MasterCard, make money. Every time you swipe your card, they get charged a fee. It's only a small fee, uh, but they get fees uh, attached to it. So even though they're not making money off of you, they're still making money off of the companies themselves. The banks, maybe not, but the uh, the Visa and MasterCard entities are. Is this extended on that? That's why Walmart sometimes wants to offer you their credit cards so they don't have to pay those fees. They yes. can make more money off of you and not have to pay. A Visa or whomever MasterCard discover. Whoever they're, yes. Yeah, so they're they're they charge them themselves, though. It's, 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 it's like a car. Walmart is already a bank in like Mexico, and they do a lot of fiscal service and actually help people out. Yeah. So they're not going to charge you anything. Yeah. It's just like a car. Yeah. 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 Y
pay it back. It's just you pay it every month. It's an agreement. Well, and rent, rent kind of goes on another. It can go against your credit as far as like. Uh, as far as uh, yeah, money owned uh, liens. Um, and that counts. That's a that's a that's yeah. a big one. Yeah, if they, if, if, they have, if you have judgments against you, that's what would happen. Um, is the company, the the rent company, whatever you're, whoever you're renting from, they would sue you, and that would go on your credit as a judgment, and that is on your credit report. That's why it can go against you, but it may not necessarily be for you if you're. Um, liens. I was under the impression that a lien could be taken out by any business that you don't pay. Liens, liens are liens are government. Well, liens are usually for be, not paying your taxes. Yeah, definitely tax liens. But I've also seen liens from contractors and things like that. The, the, lien, lien, the, the, the lien itself is part of the agreement. You actually have that lien on on whatever it is, um, like whenever you take out a car loan, the car. They have a lien on that car or, or whatever it is. Um, I guess that's what it's called. It's still the same term. I mean, pretty but much. it's not. It's not like it's not going on your credit report as yeah. something that they're collecting on. Right. A uh, lien in the credit credit form of things is just uh, something that's put on there by the government. Okay. Uh, for not paying your taxes. So as or, far as the credit but liens as far as or, yeah as far as credit is concerned. Now right. as far as the banks are concerned, liens go against your car, and if you don't pay, they take your car. Right. You can also, a lien, yes. You can also get a lien from, say, your HOA. Right, right, right. They, they take your house because you're not paying your, your HOA dues, or you're not doing something according to their guidelines that, that you agreed to. That is correct. Um, but that's the, those go on your credit report. Um, the, like I said, the low-weighted things are the total account. The number of accounts, it's a low weight. Um, Okay. But the different types of accounts matter in that section. You know, like you have just credit cards, it's not necessarily going to be as good as having some credit cards, some uh, bank loans, some mortgages, you know, whatever, uh, you know, car loan. Different types of accounts um, are good for your credit. Uh, inquiries. There are two different types of inquiries. There's what's called a hard pull and a soft pull on your credit. Uh, a soft pull is like those things where uh, you get those offers in the mail. They're, they're requests for your credit report from companies uh, to give you promotional offers. So uh, does every offer I get in the mail then indicate that the company knows my social security number? Um, I'm not sure on that one, honestly. I don't believe so. I don't think so. They All they need is they need your name. Okay. And like where you live. They need like some information. Okay. I don't have to have So all you don't have to have the social security. I don't think so. Credit. Yeah, for soft pools. I don't all think right. so. Right. Um, soft pools uh, also uh, are used by like credit monitoring services. Yeah. Um, so whenever you pull your own credit, uh, that's a soft pull. Okay. Those do not affect your credit at all in the slightest. They are on your credit report, but they do not affect your credit. Right. Um, there's a hard pull. Hard pulls are when you are requesting loans. Whenever you sign up that for that credit card application, or you sign up for that bank loan, or you sign up for that car loan, you are getting what's called a hard pull. It's a request by you for the company to pull it so that you can get something in return, whether it be that car loan or the credit card. Those go on your report and they stay for two years on that on your report. Um, it's not always a it's not necessarily a, a horrible thing to have a, a couple of inquiries, but you don't want to have a ton of them. You don't want to have like 10 plus. What if, say, what if you use it within, say, like the three day window or something? Usually, usually you, shop. you have that three, yeah, if you're shopping around, usually it will go on your credit report as one inquiry. If you're using that, that, that little time period. If they see, um, you know, you have uh, pulls from six different auto uh, places usually it goes on your report as you know one hard inquiry. Um, yes. I remember when my parents tried to get a uh, loan because Holly's under debt. Um, they told them that uh, before they get to the bank, you like a reference number or something, so you don't have to hard pull the credit again. Yeah, um, they can do that. I, I think they can reference other pulls that are already made, um, and they they were able to look at the 
report as well. Um, the the hard pulls are just they 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 go on the report because they want to know if you're looking for credit, you know, and you're looking for a ton of different places over the course of two years, you know, the the idea is that whatever you're getting inquiries on your account, you're getting an account, an extra account. It may not show up immediately, but um, they they see it as you're trying to get an account. Um, if you don't get that account, then they want to know why didn't you get that account? Uh, what did they see or what did they find out that they wouldn't accept your, your request for an account? Um, if you do get the account, then you have another um, you have another liability, potentially. So that's why the inquiries are, are counted against you. But then again, they're very low weighted. They don't matter as much as your utilization, as your payment history, as any of the derogatory marks. Um, the age of credit is a medium weight. They don't have it weighted highly, um, simply because that's one of those things, just, it just takes time. It just takes a long time to, uh, to really kick in. Um, there is a website that is free. You have all these uh, commercials for credit monitoring services, but there is one website that is completely free. You can monitor your credit. Um, it doesn't give you credit reports, but it does uh, give you a credit score from TransUnion, and it also gives you a credit score of the combination of it also gives you a score for your um, your what is it, the home home uh, home insurance score, your car insurance score. Um, you have several different scores uh, for for different things, all based on your credit report. Um, it's called CreditKarma.com. So it's I'll, I'll write it down up here for those interested. I've been using it for two years. Um, I recommend it. Again, you do have to put in uh, personal information, like your social, because they have to be able to pull your credit. Um, but uh, I've used it for two years, and I've not had a problem. So I recommend it to you guys. It's been completely free. You can check it as much as once per week track your credit and no cost to you they, they make their money on advertisements so that most people most companies make their money through subscription fees they make their money on the advertisements for you guys going there. I just want to share um, free credit charges $20 a month. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Now you are entitled to a full credit report every single year from all yes once a year from all three of the credit bureaus go to their websites and you can get a free credit report once per year. You can go to annualcreditreport.com. Yeah, you can go to annualcreditreport.com and do that for free. Um, you get your full report. And what It doesn't give you a score. It doesn't give you, all right, well, your credit score is this. It says um, these are the things that are on your report so that you can look at it and say, okay, this is, this is all correct. Um, if you see anything that's not yours, then need to definitely take it up to the credit bureau. Like I had something on my credit report that wasn't mine, and I had to submit uh, several different uh, requests for that to get removed. Uh, it was actually ended up being my dad's uh, account, uh, but he has the same name that I do. So it ended up on my report because they thought it was me. Um, once I submitted a few disputes and they researched it, they found out it wasn't me and they removed it. But um, it's good to always check at least once a year because uh, you may find something that is not uh, accurate and that will affect you getting loans. So, um, so that's credit. Uh, any other questions about credit? Yes. Yeah. There's really talking to you about a fourth credit bureau. Is there anything to worry about with that? I, I don't know. The three credit, I don't think so. Yeah, the, I mean, I think there's been the three, the, the three credit bureaus forever. I mean, that's I highly doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so. That would that would have a whole other ballpark of the game. And, yeah, yeah I mean, it's it's pretty well established. I think that would make more mess than it would. Uh, yeah. Than anybody. 
Any other questions? Yes. Except for from last year's I moved my credit card a couple of weeks after. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's I had like maybe four credit cards in my lifetime, none of which I had anymore. Uh, I did too. Two of them I believe are paid back, the other two I didn't. When I looked at my credit report, I didn't see those two items, but I saw a bunch which of two? small things. Which two? The ones that you had to pay back? Or yeah, I had to pay back. I didn't see them at all. Okay. What I saw was a bunch of smaller amount things. They might have sold it to a collections agency and then it wouldn't be under that financial institution anymore. So they might have sold it off for a smaller amount to somebody else to try to collect. So I mean that I don't know exactly how how they did it, but that yeah, was depends on yeah, yeah, what to see what what the items were. But um, yeah that, that could have been what happened. Um, and that would go uh, under judgments usually. Uh, just different debts that are still owed. And a lot of the times they'll settle those for a lot smaller amounts, and at least you can get that. Yeah, they don't get removed um, for, you know, however, I'm not sure exactly how long it is, they don't get removed and immediately, uh, but they do get updated to reflect, you know, that you had paid them. A lot of them are, if you pay them back, yeah. Collections can get kind of uh, sketchy sometimes, so if they trade hands, it doesn't necessarily end in seven years. A yeah. lot of the times they'll stay on longer, and you have to fight it a lot. Yeah. So if they trade hands, basically just pay back your debts. Yeah. <laughs> pay back your debts. It's, it's, it, gets, it gets very hard to fight those. Don't, and those stay a long time with you. So. And a lot of times, I know with when I was a, a loan officer that small things like if you owe money, bank any money, if your account was negative ten cents, it would automatically decline. It wouldn't even get to our underwriters. Um, if you have a lot of established accounts that haven't been used they won't do anything simply because they don't have enough to go on. Um, any kind of late payments will automatically decline you. Um, so if you go in asking you know, for a loan, you can ask what the stipulation, what credit score you need, what derogatory things you can't have on your credit score to, the, to whoever you're, you're speaking with. Something is they can't always tell you. Yeah, so they, they, no, they, they don't. A lot of people will come in there and tell you, you know, they've missed payments, but they want a credit card. And, you know, due to... They can't turn you away. They can't be like, yeah. hey, <laughs> you're not... I mean, there's no, really no point, because you're not going to get it. It's going to get the they, they can't say that. They, you had, they have to accept your uh, application. Yeah, Even though it, it, it instantly gets declined, they still have to accept it. So that's only going to go back to hurt you. So what about so, like those car dealerships that say, you know, we accept any or no credit, any credit, blah blah blah. Um, I guess it's their own loan. Well, yeah, a lot of them are are, are they, they they loan you in, internally. Usually they 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 make the loans internally. They know a guy. They give you the car guy. and they say, all right, pay us back, or we come and take it back. Um, they all your and then your house. Yeah. <laughs> I would I would check. I would I would bet you're probably paying a lot more for that loan. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. A lot. Yeah. So, what do you do if like you have absolutely no credit? I've been told that if you have like no credit history, like you um, no credit, credit it's history. worse. It's worse than even having bad credit. No. No. Because you're no, wild. No, 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 no. No credit is much better than having bad credit. Bad credit is very hard to get rid of. At least no credit, you can establish something. Um, usually, with no credit, you want to apply for uh, a little cheapy credit card from the company that. Uh, you know that um, you can possibly get like ones that specifically say, all right, for those with no or you know low credit, or you actually want to try for credit card companies that accept bad credit. Um, no, no credit is similar in, in a sense to bad credit because they don't know you're still a high risk. There's, but, a, there's a lot of variables. But but at the same time, at least you don't have to erase anything. I'm sorry, just out of curiosity, on scale, uh, where exactly is like 620 on good or bad credit? Oh, geez. Um, 620 is about average, I'd say. Again, um, Credit Karma, uh, go on there and look. They have actually scales for every section. Like, um, for utilization, uh, it says 1 to 20 percent is really good, it's an A. 21 to 40% is a B, 41 to 60% is a C. Actually, 0% utilization is a C. B 
because you're not using your credit. That's why using some credit is, is better than using no credit at all. Well, so I'm just curious because like on the last report that I got, it said that I, I'm at 620, but I still actually can't get a credit card. I can get a store card, but I keep getting denied for like an actual credit card. 620 is, 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 is it's an average, it's fair, yeah. um, but you really want to try and get up to 700 if you're around 700. If you get to 700, usually you have no problems getting okay. you know, different cards. It, it really depends on what... I've seen people get loans at 620, but I, you know, without seeing a detail of your credit history, like what car. Yeah, and you know, have. you need to see what what their mortgages are, what their car payments are, what their student loans are. They need to see all. And the again, if you haven't pulled like a detailed credit score, you don't know if there's something tiny holding you back that might not even be in your name. So it, what I would do recommend I would recommend doing is is one get your credit report if you haven't this year. Just get a full report from each of the different three credit bureaus. And also sign up for Credit Karma uh, and, and see. Because not only, the, the great thing about Credit Karma is it's not just a credit monitoring site, it's, it's also, uh, it teaches you about credit. It says, hey, this is good for your credit. This is what this does. It has different notes on, you know, what this section is. And it, and it is, it's, it has this little report card, you know, you see at the top, it has little tabs on each section. And it says, you're doing an A in this category, or a B in this category, or a C in, 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 in this one. And uh, it tells you that all of this information, this highly weighted, medium weighted, low weighted, all of that information is on there. You know, uh, say what weight each category has, and um, also uh, what you can do to improve it. There's also, uh, I know, I use I didn't need that protection through my bank um, because I get it really cheap. But um, I think on average it'd be like twelve bucks a month. But it's pretty cool because like mine gives me every inquiry that's ever been taken out. It texts me when my credit score goes up or down 10 points. I see every detail on every credit bureau. So I mean, there's there's different ways. Credit Karma, I would say if you're just starting, it's probably the best bet for you, just so you have an idea of where you're, where yeah. you're at. And it does, and it does, I mean, you can actually have it send you alerts as well. That website, uh, you sign up, and when you sign up, you can actually have it send you alerts for different things, like emails, like, hey, there's a new credit inquiry. Uh, did you try and get a loan? You know, um, it is a, credit, a full credit monitoring site. Um, it does all of the things that those paid sites do. It's just free. They, they make their money on advertisements. Um, was there anything else on any of, this, of these other topics that I missed that uh, someone had a question about? Um, any anything? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that is actually a whole other section. Um, we're out of time. I can go through them really quickly. Um, there's IRAs, Roth IRAs, which are essentially the same thing. They te they're they're treated. Uh, they treat taxes differently, though. Yeah, one is like free tax. The other one, one is free tax. One is post tax. Um, so take out tax when IRAs, it goes in, or takes out tax. The, 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 the three big ones are IRAs, Roth IRAs, and 401ks. Um, Roth or IRAs, they have the, uh, the traditional IRAs, they may save you taxes that year. Um, what happens is you put it in and you declare it on your tax return at the end of the year that you put this much in your 401k. And if you haven't made too much money, then uh, you can get a, a, a lot of the taxes deferred. The downside is uh, you pay money on all of the growth. So everything that you've earned over the years, you also pay taxes on, uh, as well as everything that you put in. You pay it just on the back end. Instead of paying it initially, you pay it at the back end. And you only may get that uh, that, that deferment, depending on how much money you make. But the nice thing, if I remember about the Roth thing, is that if you do it at a time when the taxes are low, you actually can save yourself a lot of money just taking it all out during the low. That's, that's yeah. our what ifs. Yeah, yeah. So it all it's all would depend on, on the individual. Uh, what I'm saying is is you have tax deferred growth, but you pay the tax when you take it out. Uh, there are no income limits to contribute to it. Um, there are mandatory required distributions, meaning that you have to take start taking money at age 70 and a half. Um, any withdrawals that you make before 59 and a half are subject to a 10% penalty, meaning whatever money you're taking out, you have to give the IRS 10% just because you're taking out of your retirement account early before 59 and a half, which is, I think, stupid, but that's... I understand they're, they're trying to make it to where you really don't want to 
take it out, yes. but at the same time, it's just like it's a free money grab for the there, there, are, there are ways to get around that. Uh, there's a whole list of different ways to get around it uh, in certain situations, but you have to meet the requirements. Uh, the Roth IRA is really great because it's tax-free growth. You don't get the tax benefit on your taxes that year, um, but you get whenever you do withdraw it, it's free. There's no, there's no extra taxes that you have to pay on any of the gains. And you also get your, uh, your initial contribution tax-free because you already paid your taxes on it. Um, you also have, um, you could be any age, you have, you do have income limits. If you make more than $112,000 a year, you cannot contribute to it. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> um, you, have, you still have the 10% penalty, but that's only gonna be on the earnings, only on the gains that you've made. All of the initial contributions that you have made, which is all the money that you put in um, initially, you can withdraw that at any time, no penalty. So it's almost like, almost like a savings account in that sense, that you can make your withdrawals uh, of that money at any time with no penalty, uh, but only the contributions. Um, there is a loophole for the for the Roth IRA. There's a 401k Roth IRA loophole. That's another section. Um, 401k is given to you by your employer. You can only get it if you have your employer that offers one. Um, they're only, but the downsides are that you know you only are allowed certain investment options. They don't, you know, you can't just go and buy certain stocks or whatever. You have to, you have to go buy whatever their plan is. Um, you do get an employer match though. Um, sometimes, sometimes, which is free money. Um, if you are offered a 401k, take. Your 401k and, and put in whatever you can up to at least the match. If you're not, you're turning down free money. Yeah. It's like getting a bonus at work. Um, vesting. Uh, vesting. There's two, two different types of vesting. Uh, there's immediate vesting. Uh, I'm sorry. There's graded vesting and uh, cliff vesting. And there's also immediate vesting. Um, immediate vesting is just how it sounds. You, every bit of money that is vested into your account that your employer puts in is yours immediately. There is also great investing, which is all of the money that your company puts in. Um, it's gradual ownership. You know, over two years, uh, you may be 20% vested. Then three years, 40% thir uh, vested. Then three, four years, you know, 60% invested. And, it, and the maximum is six years for that until you're fully vested. There's also cliff vesting, which is instead of doing it two, three, four years, you're partially invested even more and more. They do it, you're not invested, or you're not vested at all until you're 100% invested. Um, the max for that is three years. It says that you are not entitled to any of the money until you've worked there for three years, or whatever the plan is. Um, the way they do this, so the reason they do this is they want you to have the account and be with the company for a certain amount of time before you take their money. Yeah, they want, yeah, exactly. Um, there are all, all kinds of other types of accounts. There's a Roth 401k, which is the same thing as a regular 401k. It's a similar difference between the, the Roth, the IRA and Roth IRA. Um, I, use, I use the Roth 401k. Absolutely love it. Oh, I, I, I wish I was offered I a Roth, Roth 401k. <laughs> There's also a simple IRA, which is offered through the employer. It's similar to a 401k, but it's for small companies. There's an SEP IRA, which is a self-employed IRA. There's a 403b which is uh, for schools, churches, and charities. 457 plan, which is for state and local government and non-governmental en entities. And then there's a profit sharing plan. Um, there's just so many different types of retirement accounts. The thing you know, need to know about retirement accounts is the reason they exist is because of taxes. If taxes did not exist, retirement accounts probably would not exist. You would just have your regular accounts. Yeah. Um, your investment accounts. Um, the difference between all of the different uh, retirement accounts is how they treat your money. Each retirement account is, um, it's just like a bucket. You have you know, a bucket here for money, a bucket here for money, and a bucket here for money. Yeah, it's all over there. <laughs> um, you put money into each of these buckets and they're treated 
based on, like they're, they're treated tax-wise based on which bucket it's in. You know, if this is an IRA, then you're gonna put money in and you'll be taxed on any of the money that's coming out of it later in life whenever it comes out. If this is a Roth IRA, you're taxed on it before it ever goes in and then any of the money that it's grown, you can take out tax-free. They're all just different vehicles for your investments. Um, I don't want my bucket. Yeah, you can have the bucket back. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. He's got the Roth 401k. He's got the Roth 401k. Yeah, thanks. I got the big bucket. It's a Jesus bucket. It's a Jesus bucket. Yeah. The only time I ever went to Chick-fil-A is uh, during Sunday. Yeah. I have to get, after last night, I had to get some Jesus Sundays. Yeah. Chick-fil-A is best on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, there, I could go into so much more about retirement accounts. I, I kind of just raised the surface there because we're, we're kind of out of time. Um, I can keep answering questions until they kick us out, though. I don't think there's any panel. Get backwards. out! Oh, no! Uh, as, far as, I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I can keep answering questions until they kick us out. <laughs> but, uh, See your authority. You know, uh, you know, especially if anyone has any pertinent questions or anything that piqued their interest that uh, maybe they want to know about or and didn't know about before. Um, yes, actually, <laughs> Wells, Fargo, Wells Fargo, man. I have Wells Fargo, but I have no credit. Do you have a card that I can use? Um, I, thank you. I literally have no credit score. Um, I mean, you probably, you probably try, you could, I would try for like a black card. All right. Um, and then if you couldn't get that. There's so many different and things. Actually, when having a small business account, even though we have no loans or any kind of credit for that, would that somehow be for the business? Well, I mean, like, I own an LLC and I use Wells Fargo to put my personal checking in. This is the business. It depends how the business is on the Good. Good. It makes a slide if it's all of you guys doing something. I'm happy to get off of that. Yeah, because they're treating like this. You have to with that thing. Yeah, I think LLCs. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention about credit cards, like the bits. Yeah, we haven't taken any of the bits. It's all our own. You don't need security. Rack up your credit cards and then pay it off all but like a dollar. So then it reports that you're utilizing it. But you do have a basic card for a super card? That's bullshit. No. <laughs> okay. Because what happens is you're going to rack up your credit card and you're going to pay off all but a dollar. They're going to charge you interest on everything you racked up, not just that dollar. Not only that, but they don't report, uh, again, they don't report your, your utilization based on how much interest you're paying. They usually report it.